Today we're going to talk about the incretin hormones, which is the mechanism by which Ozempic helps people lose weight. But we're going to discuss natural ways to boost the levels of these incretins to help you with weight loss. And it's coming right up. The amount of body fat that we carry is regulated much like a thermostat. That is, when the amount of body fat goes too high, then our body actually uh, secretes hormones to bring it back down to normal. It's really not based on calories, it's based on hormones, such as insulin, which is what we talked about in my book, The Obesity Code. Now, insulin is a hormone that raises that uh, body fat thermostat so that you carry more body fat. But there are also hormones that bring it back down. And the incretins are one of those groups of hormones, of which there's several, but the main ones are GLP-1 and GIP. And these are the hormones that the various uh, weight loss drugs that have been quite successful recently, such as Ozempic and Munjaro, they affect these hormones. In the case of Ozempic, GLP-1, and in the case of Munjaro, both GIP and GLP-1. The amount of body fat we carry is tightly regulated. We don't want too little because then we wouldn't have any stores of calories, and we don't want too much because then that, that's going to make us slower, it's going to be harder to catch food, it's going to be harder to run away from predators, and so on. So the incretins have several important jobs. One is to tell us when to stop eating by making us full. The second big job is to tell us when we should eat again by keeping us full. So incretins tell us to stop eating and when to start eating again. So how does it do this? There are two main mechanisms. The first is that it slows gastric emptying. So when you eat a meal, there's more on that meal than you can process all at once. So the stomach acts like a uh, holding tank. It, it, it churns it, it mixes with stomach acid, it starts the process of digesting, but then it slowly releases its content into the small intestine so that the small intestines don't get overloaded with this big meal all at once. So over the period of a few hours, it's gonna release it slowly. The small intestine then has time to absorb it properly. By slowing this gastric emptying, what the um, incretins do is slow down the glucose spike so that the glucose rise is much slower and more steady. If the stomach is not emptying as quickly, it's going to stay distended for longer. There are stretch receptors within the stomach that tell the body, hey, the stomach is full, you should stop eating. So this is a very important mechanism to tell us to stop eating and because it stays, uh, it stays full for longer, we delay the next meal naturally. The second big effect is in the brain and the appetite is controlled mainly in the area of the brain called the hypothalamus. The uh, incretins are secreted by the intestinal cells and they have to go into the bloodstream where they cross the blood-brain barrier and then they act at something called the circumventricular organ which is an area in the brain that is leaky uh, in terms of the blood-brain barrier so that the um, incretins can cross over from the peripheral circulation into the central nervous system and then it has its effect. And then it also acts at the so-called area of prostrema which causes nausea and this accounts for a lot of the side effects that we see with these weight loss medications which is that they stop appetite but they also cause a lot of nausea and vomiting. It's not really a side effect because that's really the way that these so if we want to increase incretins without taking Ozempic, how can we do it? First, you can try eating more dietary fat. The incretins may play a big role in that. Several studies have shown, for example this one, that uh, if you take carbohydrates as opposed to dietary fat, then the increase in the incretins is much lower. In this study, for example, they looked at soup and they uh, paired it either with 50 grams of carbohydrates or butter or olive oil, and they measured how high the GLP-1 uh, spiked afterwards, and they also looked at GIP, 
Um, but you can see that both types of dietary fat really raise the incretins much higher, the GLP-1. A very similar study in 2007 showed that if you replace carbohydrates with fat, you get the same expected decrease in insulin, which is good because insulin drives uh, the storage of fat, but you also get this higher level of GLP-1. The second way, eat more protein. And again, it's already well known that eating higher protein leads to greater satiety. For example, if you eat a steak versus if you eat uh, cookies or drink pop, for example, you know you feel more full. This study in 2006 looked at uh, the effect of a 30% protein diet versus a 10% protein diet, which conforms to the recommended daily allowance or RDA guidelines. So it's not a low protein diet, it's an adequate protein diet. But you can see that the lower protein diet led to greater hunger, and this may be related to the GLP effect. The higher protein leads to higher GLP, which leads to less hunger, because that's the effect. That's a satiety hormone. And different types of proteins may have different GLP effects as well. So branch chain amino acids, such as found in dairy, may actually have a higher GLP effect. So that's why eating more of those may be very beneficial. Number three, eat more fiber. A lot of carbohydrates that are unprocessed come with a lot of fiber. This is a type of resistant starch, and you might want to check my previous video on resistant starches and the five different types. But fiber is one of those types, and it doesn't get digested or absorbed. So this fiber reaches the colon, and where there it gets fermented by the gut microbiome to short-chain fatty acids, or SCFA, and these are things like acetate, butyrate, propionate. And these interact with free fatty acid receptors 2 and 3 to boost GLP secretion. So again, if you eat more fiber, you're getting a bit of a double whammy effect. That is, the fiber is going to be bulkier. So therefore, it's going to increase those stretch receptors in the stomach. It's harder for the fiber to go through. It doesn't go through as quickly, for example, as white flour, which is going to go directly through the small intestine, directly into the bloodstream, shoot up that glucose. The fiber is bigger, it's uh, bulkier, it's harder to move physically, so it's going to slow things right down, and then it's going to increase the tidy by the time it gets to the colon. Number four, try bitter foods. Bitter foods are very interesting because we have bitter taste receptors on our tongue and you'd think that people would naturally avoid these bitter foods, but there's a lot of people who really love bitter melon and bitter gourd, for example. They're very traditional foods and in fact, a lot of people use them in traditional medicine for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. And it turns out that these bitter taste receptors may activate incretins. Uh, this study, for example, in bitter gourd, found not only a profound blood glucose lowering effect, but also significantly raises GLP, which may be responsible for this anti-glycemic effect. And of course, that's exactly how Ozempic works for the treatment of type 2 diabetes as well, and the bitter foods may be doing the same thing. Number five, curcumin. So this is found in turmeric and found in many curries. And again, it's very used traditionally for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, but turns out that this uh, spice also has a very significant GLP effect. So because it increases GLP, it has a uh, natural effect to decrease satiety, and therefore uh, the, the, the glycemic index tends to be lower, and that may be a real benefit. So those are five ways in which you can hack the incretin hormones to your benefit. Eat more dietary fat, eat more dietary protein, number three, eat fiber, number four, bitter foods, and number five, curcumin.